morning, guys. Uh, this is Nikki Yu, also known as Spaces Trader, and you are watching the awesome Panic Show. We are happy that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you haven't, please click subscribe and click that bell for all our notifications. We give daily live stream market updates for the Philippines and globally. So let's start. This is the first day that we saw this green number in the Philippines, 6,000. So um, a lot of people are asking, hey, what do you think about 6,000 index? Let's dive into the charts, shall we? Okay, uh, this day, uh, of course, your PSEI will never reach 6,000 if your SM investments never went up. So SM investments is actually your 52-week uh, new high. Um, technically, it is a 52-week new high because it is higher than your January. Or is it? Or no, no, no. No, not yet a 52-week new high. Okay. Uh, either way, um, as you could see, it was really SM that really helped uh, protect the market uh, from about low of 500. Now it's trading at about 946, almost 100% from the lows. Uh, AC also from about 360 to 740. This is a 100% move. So your SMAC carries a lot of weight in your index such that um, it was the one that really brought your Philippine index out of the quagmire and into the 6,000 zone. Ayala Land, 33. Let's take a look at your big names. SM Prime at 32. And of course, the number five would be BDO, which, is, uh, ra which rallied from about uh, 85, 86 to about 100. That five, five stock movement propelled your index going from about 5.4 to 6,000. But I think the bigger picture is what you should understand, what happened in the bad names. So we call them sympathy love names. We discussed on May 28, 2020, that these names such as Macro Asia and Cebu Pacific were bottoming out. We even recommended a buy on 33 on Cebu Pacific. And we said that it wouldn't be it wouldn't be surprising to see Cebu Pacific hitting 40 anytime soon. Lo and behold, today, June 2, Cebu Pacific is at 43. You've got Macro Asia at 508. Let's look at the charts for these two battered names. So uh Nothing surprising here. All of the reopening efforts, um, everyone knows the June one is GCQ. So uh, we've seen a lot of rallies in the U.S. for airlines. Uh, and we were saying that, uh, you know, it would be just time, uh, a time delay for Cebu Pacific to also rally in partnership or of the sympathy abroad with the tourism data picking up with other countries. So uh, a lot of the people who are traveling is really just for work. It's not for leisure, but uh, they have to go back to work or do, like OFWs have to go back to work or, and, and so forth. So we're seeing that these rallies are your uh, sympathy rallies uh, from about 31 low. Now it's about 45. That's about a 50% move from the lows. Um, during that time, we're saying at 33, there was a 10% risk and a 50% reward, which was really a great uh, opportunistic trade. Cebu Pacific did hit the mark, so that's a good hit ratio move for Seb. Uh, Macro Asia, just to show you what happened, uh, we were saying that the triple bottom was in the works. Of course, this was the first bottom. The second bottom, again, it was inspired with the Moderna vaccine rally abroad in USA. Uh, and then more data coming out from the U.S. that the airlines as a sector worldwide was recovering. And that uh, helped inspire companies in the Philippines in a particular battered zone, such as the airlines, to also recover. We have seen this recovery from about 340 to 508. Now, um, of course, Security Bank has rallied. Uh, this was also a pick of ours. Um, we said that the MSCI deletion was uh, able to give us a double bottom for Security Bank. And so uh, that 84 below handle was uh, a great opportunity to buy. However, the move right now at 97 could be a potential resistance. Resistance meaning people might try to trim and sell. So you've got Security Bank here at a limited upside 100, uh, even if it can go to 110. We would advise people to start trimming, uh, take some profits out, uh, and then give some some move uh, just in case it's still above 90. It could go to 100, 110. So better better reward, but uh, scale out uh, as it as it goes higher or as it goes lower. 
Uh, you've got about BDO. We've discussed BDO already. Uh, okay, other MSCI deletions. Of course, MY was something that we were discussing because of the capitulation of volumes. Um, so far, Mega Wide has rallied from about 450 to 570. Take note that uh, that rally move is a V shape from the MSCI. Uh, MSCI was announced May 13. So it used to trade at 6, fell all the way to 450 on that announcement of deletion. And now this recovery is just to go back to that pre-MSCI deletion. So uh, that's just really a recovery back to this 6 peso zone. So it's more of a, you can call it more like a sympathy to the companies that have uh, been uh, deleted during the MSCI. The MSCI refers to the Morgan Stanley Composite Index. Okay, so um, let's take a look at some earnings reports for the day. Uh, we've already gotten the earnings report for Pure Gold's first quarter 2020. So uh, this is for the March, and I'll show you some insights that, uh, that, that are really um, important for me. So just a few things. Uh, gross profits grew by 13% uh, in first quarter 2020. You've got the net sales expanding 17.4% in first quarter 2020. Pure gold accounts for about 77% of the consolidated net sales. Gross profit margin is 16.9%. Your consolidated net income is 16% uh, up with net profit margin of 4.3% for pure gold, uh, I mean for total. But uh, if you're just looking at pure gold, the net margin of our pure gold is 3%. SNR, uh, the upper the upper end is uh, net margins eight and a half percent. Your core net income grew by sixteen percent in full year twenty nineteen. This snapshot is good. Uh, you could see that pure gold is four point six billion gross profit. SNR is two point three billion. So roughly, uh, your nineteen SNR stores contributes about half of the income uh, equivalent to three hundred eighty pure gold uh, stores. For those who are not aware, we are already 436 pure gold stores, and that is almost a double in the last uh, six years from 215 stores to 436. From 2011 to 2013, that was also a double, so uh, 100 to 200 to 400. Let's see in the next seven years whether we have 800 pure gold stores, um, but uh, this is really a true growth story with strong rapid expansion via organic um, internal cash flows so most of their expansion has really been brought about by their own uh, income and profits so this is really a domestic play everything of pure gold is luzon visayas mindanao you could see that the total number of stores is now 443 232 hypermarkets 102 supermarkets you've got 50 pure gold extras 20 snrs 39 snr qsrs so when you're talking about qsr we're talking about quick service restaurant that would be the new york style pizza of SNR where you can buy and take out even uh, in, COVID, in COVID. So it's a takeout delivery. Now, uh, for those who are not aware, the financial performance of Pure Gold, it's 40 billion. That is a strong performance in sales. Uh, Pre-COVID time, your net sales would have grown only 11%. This up 17% shows to us that Pure Gold did uh, exemplify that higher spike due to the COVID season, uh, COVID world. Uh, of course, your Kager has gone from about 9% up to 13% up. Gross profits expanded from about 6 billion to about 7 billion, an additional 1 billion pesos uh, this quarter. Uh, you could also see that uh, the operating margins have gone up, uh, operating income, operating expenses have risen, but uh, they're able to stay static, no? So Kager 10%, 11%. So uh, the growth of sales is still higher. Therefore, your net income, your EBITDA margin is actually higher uh, from about 3.5 billion to 4 billion in terms of EBITDA. Uh, margin 10%, around 10%. Um, okay, that would be for your pure, uh, if you're going to look for pure gold only, just for pure gold from 26 billion to 30 billion, 31 billion, that's up 17%. That's almost a double because it used to be just 10% growth in revenue. So that's not, uh, that's not, that's a really good number actually. Um, okay, so uh, net profits and margin up 1% due to uh, your uh just lower margin in general. So that means they didn't raise prices, but sales were higher. 
Now let's take a look at SNR. SNR, your your uh, revenues went from 8.2 billion to 9.57 billion. That's additional almost 1.3 billion peso in sales, meaning a lot of people shop more than what they should be shopping. People shopped about 16% higher quarter and quarter. Uh, but but that growth is actually almost similar to the CAGR in the last few annual years. You could see that the gross margins of uh, SNR this time went up 30%, meaning uh, even if SNR prices were higher, people were uh, the price was inelastic for most people. And therefore, this is substantial gain. Uh, SNR earned 40% higher. Uh, it used to earn about 574 million. Now it's 8. Uh, 800 million. That means that uh, it's really more of a margin story here. Uh, they sold more and they have been getting more profits in SNR. Uh, def definitely, uh, the capex for this company uh, is still uh, ongoing. They've got 3.4 billion pesos. They want to open still 25 new pure gold stores, two SNR stores. Um, 10 SNR QSRs and a few maintenance capex. So uh, you could see that the big uh, the big profits really come from SNR. So uh, I would say that this higher uh, higher capex for SNR is a good thing. Uh, it it tells you that more and more uh, Filipinos are able to shop with a higher ticket spend uh, because uh, in SNR, the average ticket spending volume is about uh, 4,000 pesos. So this is the average net ticket, 4,327 pesos versus your uh, pure gold net ticket fare of about 750 pesos per grocery bag. So uh, in general, yeah, we still like pure gold. Uh, pure gold actually these days because of that... Um, because of that general uh, sympathy to the airlines, to the financials, to the MSCI, had uh, had had seen some bit of uh, profit taking. Now, don't don't worry. This is not a distribution. This is just a normal profit taking after a strong move from twenty six to fifty. So that's almost a hundred percent move. So uh, if you see Ayala Corp and SM here at six thousand zone index getting some uh, take profit, that's also part of the uh, part of a healthy uh, healthy market wherein people learn how to take profits uh especially after a big big move so uh in general we're still seeing that uh although pure gold could drop uh it could retest this support at 43 or uh even if it goes somewhere here at about 42 41 you've got a lot of support uh even in the fibonacci retracement this is less than about 23 percent so uh, yeah, this is still uh, uh, at your 382 zone. So uh, I would say that anywhere from 41 to 45, uh, that is a zone that people who wants pure gold could buy. Uh, remember, 40% SNR growth in income. You've got 17% up in sales. Pure gold today is just a cheap 15 times PE company. And with that kind of growth, uh, I would say that many people would continue to buy this uh, supermarket in the Philippines. So, uh, yeah, continue to uh, be bullish. Uh, use any drops here at about 41 to 44 after you take profit in your security bag, in your Cebu Pacific, in your macro Asia's. You could actually try to uh, siphon some of those money into pure gold. That's a good pick. Now, um, how how is your target going to be? We think that you can see it hit about 50 and then break above 50 to go new highs all-time high zone why is it gonna break 50 so recall that in 2013 pure gold used to just have 215 stores now uh seven years later 2020 we're still at that uh 44 50 zone we think that after a double in your sales a double in your profits a double in your store count Actually, your, your, your income has more than doubled in the last seven years, and yet the P.E. ratio is still at 50. So it used to trade here at about 30 times. So now it's just 50 times. It's 15 times. And so we think that this is a very discounted uh, supermarket, even if they're very good profits. So uh, you, you want to buy into this company. Aside from that, let's discuss some earnings front. 
Uh, today, uh, Shakey's Pizza has already shown that their net profit fell 35% on store closures. This is June 2, 2020. Uh, Shakey's, of course, uh, posted a drop due to the uh, Luzon-wide lockdown in March. Uh, why is it that the market is trying to recover and going up? Because since June 1, we already have uh, general community quarantine, meaning a lot more people can go out. May, 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 even if it's just takeout and delivery, uh, people are still bullish that they can recover in the next 6 to 9 to 12 months. And since the market is all about the recovery hopes about the reopening, uh, there we are seeing a rally, a rally mode for your uh, restaurants, for your airlines, for your banks. A lot of these names got hit about 60, 50 percent down. We'll we'll discuss the charts of Shakey's later. But let's read the news. No, uh, the news reported that there was a 21 percent system wide sales growth in the first two months of the year. So uh, the reason why the three month period ended flat revenues was because that last month was closed. Uh, however, their net income still managed to be a hundred. 114 million pesos for that uh, first three months, even if it's only two months open. Now, only 9% of Shakey's network of 290 stores were operational in the second half of March. These stores were only servicing delivery and carry out customers. Shakey's ended the quarter with system wide sales of 2.3 billion pesos for that quarter. The temporary closure of a significant number of stores have, ra have really damp dampened our net income. We expect the second quarter to be worse. It will be the most challenging that uh, that Shakey's will experience in their their career of about more than 20 plus years in the business. Uh, however, uh, Shakey's doesn't believe that um, they would uh, they would suffer uh, very, very much. They believe that they are in a good position to bounce back because uh, they have multi-channel, omni-channel presence. Uh, they have many stores located outside malls. Of course, pizza is a very, uh, very easy to take out and deliver delivery. So uh, sales will make up about, they believe that uh, Sales that are not located in malls make up 46% of the store network, and sales from delivery makes up about 37% of their sales. We are taking a prudent approach. In the meantime, we will still invest in our delivery, digital, and carry-out platforms and introduce new exciting innovation. So uh, not so bad. Uh, remember that, uh, you know, um, let's take a look on your Shakey's Pizza. Pizza today trades about uh, less than less than one price to sales. You recall that uh, the the sales is about two point three billion income in a quarter, even in a bad quarter. Uh, so, uh, do you know that Shakey's market cap? So we're using today Investagram. So just so you know, wait. Uh, let me show you pizza. So uh, I have also been contributing articles in Investagram, so you could uh, check it out. Uh, I talked about uh, your your uh, last stance. Anyway, uh, the market cap of Shakey's Pizza at 6.30 is 9.65 billion. So it's trading about uh, almost one times price to sales. So price to sales is a good uh, barometer. People look at the earnings. People also look at price to sales uh, and their returns on equity. So at these levels, take note that uh, Shakey's has been growing in the last five years. For those who are not aware, Shakey's Pizza is listed in the market for about uh, three years now. It started uh, 2016, uh, four years. So 2016, it, it made an IPO at about 12 pesos. I think it's 12 pesos. Uh, and then uh, it hit as high as about 18. Now you can buy it at half the price, IPO, even when, um, even when the, stump, the company uh, has really been growing their store count, and of course their sales have gone up, gone up uh, in the last four years. Now uh, I'd say that fundamentally, uh, PE ratio wise, this company is now trading at about. Of course, the earnings will be bad this year, as you could see that thirty five percent net loss uh, for Shakey's. But um, even if you discount Shakey's net profit down 50% for the year, it's sort of priced in uh, because the stock price already fell more than 50%, as you could see uh, in the charts of Shakey's Pizza. Uh, it used to trade at about 12 pesos prior to, the, prior to COVID, actually here at about uh, 
February, January, it was already trading at 10, fell to about 5, now it's about 6. We're looking at these charts, we're seeing a higher low. Of course, uh, Shakey's Pizza is not part of your index, but uh, you know, you never know, maybe in the next 10 years, uh, it could be, or in the next 5 years. Uh, Shakey's Pizza, of course, is part of your restaurants in the Philippines, part of, part of your food and beverage tobacco business. Shakey's Pizza is already owned by your Century Tuna uh, and uh, the Paul family. So we could see a lot of synergy uh, and a lot of uh, strength from the management to handle the Shakey's Pizza enterprise. Uh, take note that Shakey's Pizza now owns uh, also Peri Peri Chicken. So uh, Shakey's Pizza now has two brands. It's uh, Shakey's and Peri Peri Chicken, which is something like, a, uh, it's like grilled chicken with a lot of uh, sidings, a lot of sauces. So uh, I'd say that uh, at these levels, um, Shakey's would trade, it depends really on your expected earnings, but it trades anywhere from about 10 to 20 times, assuming it earns about 400 to a billion pesos. But uh, typically, pizza, Shakey's will trade about 800 million net profit, uh, 800 to a billion peso profit. So uh, given COVID time, this is a one-time uh, loss for the year or maybe very, very few income for the year. Uh, not a problem. We can see that Shakey's Pizza can recover in the next 12 months. So uh, use any dips. We're seeing now this uh, higher low. Take a look at uh, this, the Fibonacci. Okay, so what you do is uh, February 20 is the time when the COVID pandemic went global. And that uh, from 920, it fell all the way to 450. We got the support here at 567, a little bit of resistance here at about 630, but another resistance at 690. Should we break above 690, you could see 740, eventually 820, eventually 9 peso. For those who like a uh, restaurant play uh, with a good, you know, with a good company, Shakey's Pizza might be worth your cup of tea. So uh, that ends my report for the Philippine market. I hope to see you again. Tune in to Awesome 10X every single day. Bye-bye. Nikki, my yeah? question now. Okay, so yeah, let me see the question. Did foreign funds transfer to the Philippines because of internal strife in the U.S.? The reason why we're up? No, the, the U.S. is very strong. Uh, no, it's just that we are getting some sympathy, guys. Uh, we're getting sympathy. Um, uh, right now, uh, let's take a look at some index. Okay, uh, I'll show you. I think uh, so far the Philippine market is rallying because... Uh, there's some foreign buying, but we're not saying that the foreigners are leaving their own country. No, this is a good market valuation. No, we're, we have seven billion pesos, 117 advancers. Foreign total uh, buying is about 3.9 billion. Foreign sell is 2.8. So that's a huge chunk being bought in the Philippines. Uh, what did they buy? We can go to your stats. Uh, let's take a look in the foreign buying. Uh, let me see if I can see it. I think it's here in my analytics. Eh. Uh, teka lang. To be honest, I don't take a look so much in foreign buying. Uh, but yes, I, I'll show you. Let's see. Broker rankings. Okay, foreign buying. We can see that, uh, okay, so foreign buying, they bought a lot of SM. Uh, JP Morgan. Uh, Philippines are call financial. Call financial is very bullish too. Philippine call financial bought a lot of Jollibee. Uh, yeah, actually we saw a, a a strong rebound for Jollibee owing to the owing to the oversold nature. So uh, this is also one of the reopening uh, reopening potential recoveries. Uh, we could see that uh, Jollibee had made a higher low zone here. So a while ago, I was saying that higher lows for Shakey's Pizza, of course, very high low, higher low for Jollibee. We're seeing that this is a recovery play for Jollibee. It wants to recover. Uh, sure, there was an oversupply of chicken because there was less demand from restaurants, less, less demand domestically. But uh, if, if we are reopening, then hopefully there's recovery, not just in the airlines, but also in restaurants, also in your malls. Uh, so we're seeing some pickup, no? Jollibee went from about 108, fast move to 123. You still have resistance here at 139 to 140 zone. But I see that there are several bulls willing to buy Jollibee already here at any price uh, uh, from about 111 to 120. You're seeing that the bulls have this uh, 
have it in command. Uh, I hope I answered the question. Um, the Philippines is, uh, you can see there was a breakout in the Philippine market. Uh, but uh, be, be careful on what you buy because uh, some companies are nearing your resistance zones. Although the Philippine index can still rally to about 62, this is your uh, resistance, uh, 6,200. I think that the move of 62 uh, will be catalyzed, of course, by your big index weights. That big index names would be Ayala Corp, Ayala Land. So Ayala Corp can still rally to 760 to 800, uh, but uh, limited upside for those who are buying. Uh, take a look at your risk reward. Um, if you really want to buy Ayala Corp, I'd say that try to wait a bit at about 680 if you have an entry point. But if not, uh, don't push it. Kumbaga para, you know, uh, just 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 try to wait for your entry point. Yon. Okay. Uh, yon. Yun lang. See you again. Uh, ask again questions tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs>